Welcome to Topic 5 Assets and Bases. Uh, in this video we're going to cover subtopic 5.1 on asset based concepts. Our learning objectives for this video are going to be define assets and bases in terms of proton transfer, write equations for proton transfer reactions, and identify conjugate acid base pairs. This will link into our first science understanding. Uh, acids are compounds or ions that donate protons, whereas bases are compounds or ions that accept protons, which are H plus ions. Now the idea of acids and bases has been around for quite some time. And scientists have looked at ways in which we can try and define what makes an acid or what makes up a base. Uh, essentially, looking at high school chemistry, um, a theory which was proposed by two scientists independently, this was uh, Johann Nicholas Bronsted and Thomas Martin Lowry, both in 1923 came up with the same theory in terms of what make up acids and bases. They essentially define acids and bases in terms of proton transfer. And to simply state it, uh, an acid is a proton donor whereas a base is a proton acceptor. We also use this term alkali, which refers to a base that is soluble in water. And when we talk about a proton, we can also refer to it as a hydrogen ion. And that's because hydrogen atoms typically are made up of one proton, one electron. And if they lose one electron, then they essentially consist of one proton. So if we now consider this following reaction, we've got here HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, reacting with NH3, which is ammonia, this occurring in solution. What we can see is that there is the formation of these two products here. HCl is classified as our acid, and NH3 is classified as our base. We said that acids are proton donors, so what will happen is that the HCl will donate a proton to NH3, and in doing so, the HCl or the hydrochloric acid loses a hydrogen with a one positive charge, leaving a chlorine or a chloride with a negative charge. On the other hand, ammonia uh, gains this proton, making it a base. So it goes from NH3 to NH4+. So uh, we can see that ammonia has acted as a base. The next science understanding looks at reactions between acids and bases and how they can be represented using chemical equations that illustrate the transfer of protons. Uh, we essentially need to be able to write equations showing this proton transfer between acids and bases and also look at this idea of conjugate acid-base pairs and be able to identify these pairs given the equation of a proton transfer reaction. Before we have a look at those understandings, it's important to note that protons essentially don't exist freely in solution. They don't exist freely in nature. So in solution, we have a molecule like water which is able to stabilize the positive charge of a proton. And it forms a bond which is like a covalent bond, but it's uh, what we call a coordinate bond. Uh, if we have a look at the example down here, we've got a water molecule, we've got a lone pair of electrons here. What we say is that it can donate both of its electrons uh, as a means of stabilizing this positive charge, and in doing so it forms this coordinate bond. So it's similar to a covalent bond in that you've got a pair of electrons shared between two atoms, however in this case Oxygen is the atom that has donated both of those electrons. We show a coordinate bond often with an arrow, so the arrow points to the atom that is being given uh, electrons essentially. So with water having donated electrons to stabilize the proton, it's then formed a species which we call the hydronium ion. We can see that it's made up of three hydrogens and an oxygen, but it also carries this positive charge. So we often show that outside of some square brackets um, with that positive charge as a superscript. So we call this the hydronium ion. Uh, it's essentially got this formula here, H3O+. We show it's in solution or in aqueous solution. 
And for simplicity, sometimes we show it's equivalent to just H plus in solution. But keep in mind that protons don't actually exist freely in solution. So going over to the second point, looking at proton transfer reactions. Uh, a reaction between an acid and a base typically involves a transfer of protons. We have two examples down here, and we're going to see how HCl or hydrochloric acid and NH3 or ammonia interact in the presence of water. Starting off with HCl, we know that HCl is our acid. Water is able to accept a proton from hydrochloric acid, and in doing so, hydrochloric acid then forms chloride ions in solution, and we know that water can then accept that proton to form the hydronium ion. In the second equation, we've got ammonia, which we classify as a base. So bases are able to accept protons, and it happens so that water is able to donate a proton to ammonia. And in doing so, it forms the products NH4+, which are ammonium ions, and water having lost a proton forms OH-, which we know is called the hydroxide ion. From these two equations, we can see that water has the ability to donate and accept protons. We say that water is an amphiprotic substance, which means it's capable of accepting or donating a proton. In both cases, a molecule is reacting with water and in doing so, it produces charged species or ions. These reactions are typically called ionization reactions. So we could say both hydrochloric acid and ammonia are undergoing ionization to then produce ions. The next point, we're going to consider what conjugate acid-base pairs are. To do that, we have to understand that many proton transfer reactions are reversible. What this means is that the reactions can go forwards, so reactants can turn into products, but the opposite can also occur. The products can turn back into the reactants. In the case of proton transfer reactions, the products are what we call conjugate acids and bases. In example one, we see we have uh, an acid known as acetic or ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, reacting with water to produce ions. So in other words, this is an ionization reaction. Acetic acid being an acid will donate its proton to water, and in doing so it then forms what we call the acetate ion or ethanoate ion and the hydronium ion. We will then say that the acetic acid is acting as an acid. Water, because it's accepting a proton, is a base in this proton transfer reaction. But if we consider now the products, because this reaction is reversible, what it means is that the products can revert back into the reactants. And the way that happens is that the hydronium ion being positively charged is going to have the ability to donate protons back to the acetate ion, which is negatively charged. So there is this natural affinity or attraction for that positive charge to that negatively charged ion. And having a look here, we can see that the acetate ion has accepted protons. So we call this the conjugate base. The hydronium ion donated a proton, so that makes it a conjugate acid. We can see here we form what we call an acid-base conjugate pair where the acid here donates a proton to form a conjugate base, and the base accepts a proton to form a conjugate acid. To summarize, acids donate protons to form a conjugate base, bases accept protons to form a conjugate acid. And the way to distinguish between these pairs is that the conjugates differ by only one proton compared to its acid or its base that it's made from. To look at this further, we're going to have a look at example two. So this time we've got ammonia reacting with water. We know that ammonia is a type of base. So in the presence of water, water will donate protons to ammonia. And that makes ammonia the base, water being the acid. It produces our products NH4+, ammonium ions, and OH- 
hydroxide ions, we are going to get the opposite occurring in this case. Given that this is a reversible reaction, we can get protons being transferred from the ammonium ion to the hydroxide ion. And in that case, the ammonium ion here is acting as an acid. So we call this the conjugate acid. And the hydroxide ion is acting as a base, so it's a conjugate base. Remember again that for every base we have a conjugate acid. We can see that they only differ by one proton or one H+. And likewise when we look at water and the corresponding hydroxide ion. That concludes part one of 5.1. I'll see you guys in the next video.